Hi, welcome to my latest video. Today we want to take a closer look at tritium. In my hands you can see a small vial containing roughly 1 gigabecquerel of this radioactive hydrogen isotope. The phosphorus compound inside is being excited by the electrons from the beta minus decay. Fluorescence caused by UV light can also be observed. During the day almost no light emission is visible. In the dark however you can clearly see a greenish glow. Let's see if an old German Geiger counter can pick up the radiation. The probe I'm using is sensitive to beta, gamma and x-rays. Maybe you can hear a slight increase, but nothing really noticeable above background. Keep in mind that radiation is completely random. Sometimes 10 photons hit your detector in one second and the following seconds you register basically nothing. The radio code 102 is not showing an increased dose rate either. Same goes for the radio scan 701 with the filter in place. Maybe we can start measuring something after removing the filter in front of the thin mica window. This sounds a little bit more promising, but what exactly is the matter with this stuff? Why can't we get a proper reading? After all this should be insanely radioactive. One gigabecquerel means one billion disintegrations per second. If this was cesium-137 we would see a dose rate of almost 9 millisieverts per hour in a distance of 10 centimeters or roughly 4 inches. I think we have to take a look at the IAEA data. Let's open the isotope browser on our phone and have a look. Here we have tritium, to the left is deuterium and ordinary hydrogen. We can see the green beta minus decay path to helium-3, which is a stable and quite rare isotope of helium. But back to the facts about tritium. So the half-life is around 12.3 years and the specific activity of 1 gram is quite high as you can see. This is of course due to the short half-life.
using our trusty calculator and the specific activity, we can quickly see that our vial contains just 3 millionths of a gram of our radioactive tritium gas. And here is the important part. The intensity or probability of a beta decay is at 100%, so there is no other form of decay, no uh, gamma emission or something like that. And the total decay energy that is released is 18.6 keV. But we have to be clear here, not every electron possesses this kind of kinetic energy. In fact, almost no electron does. The energy is distributed between nucleus, electron and antineutrino. In other words, the energy of the beta particles is fluctuating. Most of them are reaching the average kinetic energy, in case of tritium, 5.7 keV, which is very, very low. Fun fact, the only known lower beta decay energy is from rhenium-187. Okay, let's see what a beta spectrum of tritium would look like. On the x-axis we can see the energy in kilo electron volts and on the y-axis we have the intensity in some arbitrary unit. This just shows how many electrons at a given energy we would expect. We also see the medium energy at 5.7 keV, where most electrons will fluctuate around. The 18.6 keV max energy is basically never reached. So what's the point of all this? We have a low beta energy that can't even penetrate human skin, trapped inside a glass vial which is surrounded by acrylic. Of course we can't really measure anything. Well, that's not exactly true. We can measure something. Here's an example. The beta decay leads to electrons hitting the inside of the vial. They are being decelerated, but the energy doesn't just vanish and it is not lost. Instead, it is given off in form of a photon. Basically, X-radiation. Of course, the photon can't have any higher energy than the initial electron had. This effect of a photon emission due to acceleration, deceleration or change of direction by an electron is called Bremsstrahlung. Obviously a German word. Bremsen means to decelerate and Strahlung is radiation. We have already established that the radia code doesn't really show an increased dose rate. Maybe a spectrum inside a lead castle will yield some better results. In case you wonder, the copper and polystyrene layers are meant to cut down X-ray fluorescence. An interesting topic for another day. Time to open the app and start the spectrum.
After a few seconds we can already see a peak appearing at the left. If we zoom in, the highest peak is around 4 to 6 kV. I seriously doubt that you want to wait here for hours, so let's jump directly to the result. I saved the spectrum multiple times and the longest capture time was around uh, 173 hours. It is clearly visible that we don't have a single peak here. Instead we see multiple different energies and the average is around 5 kV. The higher energies are getting increasingly less prevalent. It kinda looks like a copy of the beta spectrum I showed you earlier. Here you get a view of the background. I'm usually getting around 5.5 to 6 counts per second where I live. Behind the LED we have like 5.4 counts per minute, which is roughly 0.09 counts per second. The last thing to try is the detection function of the Radiascan 701. The device was kind of picking up on the low energy X-rays before but the right thing to do is of course a measurement over a longer period of time. And the first step is to see what the background count rate is without all the random ups and downs. Sixteen minutes later we can say with reasonable confidence that the background is somewhere around 0.37 counts per second. Let's attach the tritium source to the detector and start a second measurement. After just 40 seconds the radio scan informs us that this source is possibly radioactive. After 9 minutes we get the end result of 0.76 counts per second. Nothing spectacular but a very neat functionality. One word of advice. Don't watch fools on the internet breaking tritium wilds thinking this is completely safe. Of course the chance of you breathing in everything in this vial is kinda low. The gas is diluted by the air. 
but the activities are sometimes insane. The legal limit in Germany is my 1 gigabag rail, but in other countries the activities can be um, quite a lot higher. As I said, the beta energy is very low. Um, the electrons can't even penetrate your skin, but they don't have to. It's a gas and it will get inside your lungs. Anyways, thank you very much for watching and stay safe.